I'd like to say good morning to each and one of you brothers and sisters in the name of Jesus Christ. It is I, once again, Brother Williams is here to share a little word of the truth with you all today. I hope everybody's doing good, doing fine, and that we know every day is not a good day where people go through things. That some people go through bad things, some people go through good things, some people wake up feeling good, some people wake up feeling bad. And they're just the way of life. But we all call it good because everything God created, he called it good. And so today is a new day. We didn't deserve it. It wasn't owed to us. So we just still, through our adversities or through our joyful moments, that we still be thankful for God for another day. We bear witness that there is one God and one God only. As scripture says in 1 John, the 5th chapter, verse 7, I believe that there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and all of these are as one, one God. And we know that that Word became flesh in John, the first chapter, verse 14, I believe. And that Word had a name, and his name is Jesus. So we thank God for Almighty Jesus, that who we serve. I'm not going to hold you long. I thought about a lesson just to bring before us and a quick review. And that is in Matthew, the 13th chapter, verses, I believe, 24th through the 30th, uh, pretty much through the rest of the whole chapter, it explains it all. But it's about the parables of the wheat and the weeds. And it's a good illustration I was thinking about to bring amongst us that uh, this sower sowed seed into a field, which was of good wheat. And the scripture says that at night as men slept, that another source sowed bad seed into the field. I want to pause right there and let us know that this is how the devil works toward try to distract us. That when God placed good seed in us, that which is his word, the devil is quickly come to try to snatch it away from you. The devil tempted Jesus, I believe, in Luke, the fourth chapter. And the Bible says that after he finished tempting Jesus, he left for a season. And in this parable, it speaks about the devil. The man went away as he planted the bad seed. So this is how the devil does toward us. The devil can try to plant seeds of lust in your mind, just like he planted in David's mind with Bathsheba. Put Bathsheba's husband on the front line of the army to get him killed so he can take Bathsheba. And he suffered from that. The devil can put some type of pride in your heart. And that is one of the six things and seven is abomination that God hates. I believe in one of the books of Proverbs that a prideful look and many people today are full of pride that we need to be humble. God respects the humble than the pride. Then the devil can plant seeds of hatred in your heart to where People will hate each other for no reason. People will hate people for their skin color. People will hate people for just for organization they're part of. Now, you can be part of any organization you want to, but we don't have the right to hate you. Now, if it's anything contradicting the Bible, God's word, Bible says hate the things God hate, and that is sin. There's things that I've done that I hate within myself that I've done. But we don't hate people. We need to just hate the sin. We got to confuse and want to hate one another. And that's being deceitful by the devil. The devil can put seeds in your heart to believe vain philosophy. Bible tells you in Colossians, the second chapter, I believe verse 13, but don't hold me strongly to that. But you check it out and see. It says, do not let any man deceive you with vain philosophy. There's traditions and rudiments of men, of the devil. So there's a lot of doctrines out here in the world that the devil's planting seeds in that we have to be careful of and read the word and pray about it, that we go in the right way of studying God's word. As the, the sower planted the seed and they woke up, the Bible says that the servants asked the sower, did you not plant good seeds? Where did these weeds come from? And he says that it comes from the enemy. The only enemy that we have as believers in Christ is the devil. The devil plants weeks 
all in our weeds, in our grass fields to distract us. But we have to stay strong and rooted in Christ. The servants of the sower, which are the angels, basically ask, shall we go pluck them up now? Now, this is the grace of God. If we are weeds or we are weeds, God has given us a chance to have to come to repentance, to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. This is why he has not came back yet. He's giving all men a chance of repentance right now. This is why the world is so terrible right now, because you have weeds and you have weeds all mixed together. But he said it's not time to pluck them all up yet. But there's going to be a time where the time, end of age of war Armageddon, excuse me, will come that all men are going to be separated. I believe in Matthew, the 24th chapter, it speaks about the God is, uh, Jesus is going to separate the men, the people, as a shepherd separates the sheep and the goats. There's going to be a great separation. You got to ask yourself, are you a wheat? Are you a wheeze? Are you a goat? Are you a sheep? My friend, I just want to tell you that we need to be the sheep because if we are sheep, we need to obey the shepherd. We all go astray at one point in time, and we still do, but we still need to take heed to the good shepherd that rather than being a goat and be casted away. Now, as I'm getting ready to close out with this, I had a garden. I grew greens, and when I grew some greens, I noticed grass was growing in between, but I did not cut the grass because it would have damaged the greens as I was um, trying to take away the grass. So I understand this parable. Sometimes the wheat have to stay in with the turnips or with the greens or with the wheat before you even destroy the other. So another way is what I'm trying to say is that sometimes we want God to remove some things out of our life, but he might just want the weeds to grow in with the wheat. So we have to bear with it until he caused the separation of both. Amen. So just think about this. God is the sower. He sows good seed. We are God's creation. Through sin, we have been corrupted by the devil. But we still have a chance to receive and come to repentance back to Jesus Christ. We thank God for the sower. Keep sowing seed, keep accepting seed, and keep praying to God that he carry you through this journey of this race. May God bless you and keep you and thank all. In Jesus' name, amen.